Russell 2000 pulling back today following its recent rally. But still, our next guest saying that now could be a good time to invest in small and mid-cap stocks. Joining us now, we want to bring in Erica Mashmeyer. She's a Columbia Threadneedles Investment Portfolio Manager. Erica, let's talk about where you're seeing some of that opportunity because there has been lots of optimism and we've seen a play up out just a bit following that 50 basis point cut here from the Fed. But more specifically, why do you see this run up that we had seen or maybe more optimism surrounding small caps? Why is that argument here to stay? I think there are several factors around it, and most of them are really leaning in favor of small caps. I mean, first, you've got um, a good economy, right? And uh, I think that needs to be in place for small caps to outperform. Um, on top of that, you've had this you know, backdrop of attractive valuations you know, relative to where they've historically traded, um, and especially compare that to large caps, which are, are not attractive versus history. Uh, you've got rates coming down. You know, We can argue the pace, but they are coming down. And uh, you, you also have this scenario where you know the, the mega cap stocks they've outperformed because their earnings have outperformed it seems like we might be running out of catalysts there and then the you know, final factor that is is a thing in the market is there's fomo right and sentiment shifts and i think the second you have small and mid cap stocks start to do better uh you know there's fomo people don't want to be left behind and um, i think that helps drive them even further especially you know when you've got this backdrop of a risk on market. Eric, it's a fascinating point because I wonder how much the same is true for large caps. It feels like the people who are overextended into big tech want to believe this idea of the rotation, but oops, we can't actually get out of large cap tech because then we might miss it. So what are you seeing in terms of the flows into some of those big cap names that supports the idea of that rotation really becoming fruitful? We have seen uh, some some substantial uh, spikes in some smaller cap names, especially, you know, more on the, the micro cap side. So we, we run a, a strategy called the uh, Acorn Fund and it's a SMID fund. So we really own small caps and mid caps. And recently we have seen more of a rebound in some of these uh, micro caps that had felt more left behind. And you know, Portillo's restaurant is one that's up, you know, 30% over the last few months on not really a different change or a change in the fundamentals. Uh, but I think that, you know, maybe people are trying to have their cake and eat it too. The percentage mm -hmm. of, of assets that are actually invested in small caps are pretty small right now. So I don't think you need big flows to drive big moves for some of these names. Erica, the driving force then of some of these sustainable returns, is it all about earnings or what are some of the other factors that investors need to keep in mind? I think, I mean, it is it is a story of, of earnings and valuation as well. Um, I think, you know, with some of these smaller cap names, you haven't seen a change in the uh, earnings trajectory per se, uh, but uh, the valuations had gotten to levels where they were so depressed and frankly, just no change in earnings um, is, is good news. Uh, but on the other hand, you do have, you know, with rates coming down, there are several ways that that can fundamentally uh, change the, the, you know, change the reality for smaller cap stocks. Those are names that do tend to have more floating versus fixed rate debt, uh, maybe haven't been able to lock in a steady low rate for the next 10 years. So, you know, it can help them in, in that way, which should help to drive capital spending again. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, you also have just a lot of companies waiting for lower costs of capital to start some projects. And I think once we start to see that pick up, you know, I think after the election, that should start to pick up somewhat, like that should be especially good for a lot of these small cap names, uh, particularly around the construction space. And, um, and and then also too, just the impact of the housing market. There are you know, big swaths of smaller names that have uh, housing exposure, and you know, we we've seen existing home turnover be very very muted. Erica, we're back to the no landing question mark being out there over the past week here, and that's certainly contributing to the rally we're seeing in bonds. We've got you know better than expected economic data. Why go into interest rate sensitive stocks given that backdrop? I think we've got a solid economy, right? You've got a solid economy of you know 4.2% unemployment rate, and uh, you know the the path for rates is down. So um, you, I think that frankly, like this is a scenario where you can have your cake and, and eat it too a bit. 
All right. Well, I'm sure investors love to hear that. Erica, thank you so much. Really appreciate you joining us. Erica Moshmeyer, Columbia Threadneedle Investments Portfolio Manager.